Hi everyone, Richard Carlton here. I want to go through more of a detailed overview of the FileMaker Cloud offering from FileMaker Incorporated. What's important to understand up front is that FileMaker Cloud is a supplemental product or service. It's really more under the heading of a service, but it is actually a product as well, just one that you really don't get your hands on directly. So let's talk about where this fits into the FileMaker platform. So first off, of course, that we access our custom FileMaker applications or build apps by using FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced. And these are products that we run on our Macintosh or Windows computers. Additionally, we can access our custom app by using an iPhone or iPad using the FileMaker Go application. That's free from the App Store. And lastly, we can gain access to a FileMaker custom app using an Android device of some type leveraging FileMaker WebDirect. Now for more than 20 years FileMaker has offered a product called FileMaker Server. And FileMaker Server is a Macintosh or Windows based application that runs on a server on these platforms and that is what allows you to publish or host your application. Well FileMaker Cloud is a new offering that's designed explicitly to run on Amazon's AWS. Now Amazon runs data centers all over the world. They run data centers on the East Coast and West Coast of the United States. They run data centers in Europe, in Australia, in Japan. They're everywhere. So FileMaker Cloud has been designed and architected specifically to run on AWS. We're getting the simplicity, performance, and reliability that you expect with FileMaker Server without having to spend the time and resources deploying and maintaining the server. Now as a strict comparison, FileMaker Cloud is a version of FileMaker Server. And to help keep our terminology straight, going forward we're going to refer to as FileMaker Server as FileMaker Server On-Premise or On-Premise Server. So FileMaker Cloud provides us a choice between FileMaker Server and this new service offering. Now up front the main driving points of FileMaker Cloud is that the setup on AWS is radically simpler than it would be if you were taking FileMaker Server Windows Edition and building the server and then installing the FileMaker Server on top of it. There's a lot of effort and skills that go into that, something that my team has been doing for a number of years. FileMaker Cloud basically streamlines this installation process and cuts down on the installation or deployment time from hours typically down to about 20 minutes. Now what's cool about FileMaker Cloud is that you have good control over your costs and because FileMaker Cloud uses Linux based Amazon servers you're going to save the cost of running on a Linux server as opposed to a server where you also have to pay Microsoft Windows licensing fees. At the end of the day users who are logging in using FileMaker Cloud and users who are logging in using FileMaker Server will not be able to tell the difference of what kind of server that they're using. It's effectively transparent to them. All they know is that they have a FileMaker Server somewhere and it's running. Additionally, it's important to understand a couple key things. First off is that FileMaker Incorporated sees the installation or construction of a FileMaker Cloud Server as an advanced skill set, meaning someone that's pretty technically proficient. These people typically have had some sort of Amazon experience previously most likely and if not they have pretty good technical chops so they're not necessarily intimidated by working with Amazon and setting up virtual servers. Now my goal in follow-on videos is to allow intermediate developers people who know that they are not necessarily master ninjas or Jedi Knights right of the FileMaker world my goal is for these intermediate people to set up their own FileMaker cloud server if they want and so really understand that FileMaker says this is an advanced skill set although a fairly short skill set because it's very little work to do it but it's theoretically advanced my goal is to bring it down to the intermediate level now in a follow-on video we're going to get into the decision-making tree of whether FileMaker Cloud is right for you. And of course you're probably asking yourself, well, isn't FileMaker Cloud exactly the same as FileMaker Server or on-premise server? And the answer is there are some differences. So let's just run through these real quickly. 
So the first area of difference is that on-premise server generally requires that you purchase a Macintosh or Windows based server that runs in your office. Now you can actually take the on-premise server and install it up in the cloud but there's a great deal of complexity in doing that much more so than there would be with FileMaker Cloud. So understand for the first point of comparison that a lot of people are buying a physical piece of hardware which means they're largely committed to that block of hardware. If, if they, they want, want to upsize the server they, they purchased or downsize it, it that, that can, can get, get expensive and cost prohibitive really fast. fast. Because, because most vendors, vendors don't want to take back hardware that you've opened up, up installed, and started using. It's just not something they normally do. FileMaker Cloud is a bundle of the hardware and the software together to create a very simplified experience. The FileMaker Cloud offering provides us a number of purchasing options including hour by hour rental if we want or week to week or month to month or we can go ahead and reserve and commit for a year or three years if we like to get a discounted price. And We'll talk about this more in other videos. The available licenses that FileMaker requires for use of the FileMaker Cloud are a little bit more restricted than they would be on FileMaker Server. Effectively you need to be using an FLT annual license or an AVLA annual license, right? Or using an ASLA license or an annual site license. So basically to leverage FileMaker Cloud you're going to need to be using an annual FileMaker license where you pay incrementally on a subscription to FileMaker every year. The setup and spin up time of FileMaker Cloud is typically about 20 minutes. If you're building a brand new server from scratch an advanced developer will still spend a number of hours setting that up and getting it configured. So the amount of time and the amount of complexity on the setup is much less with FileMaker Cloud. Scalability is another major positive of the FileMaker Cloud. By leveraging Amazon's huge infrastructures with data centers everywhere with multiple size of servers in each of the data centers you can use a very small server for a small group of FileMaker users or you can turn a switch and after 15 or 20 minutes the server can upsize itself to a much larger server if you need that. So you can scale the server up or scale the server down which directly affects your Amazon bill. Obviously using a small server can be as low as $38 a month in that range and you can buy servers that are worth hundreds of dollars a month if you need a highly robust large size server. Now taking a look at FileMaker Cloud versus FileMaker Server both of these have an administrative interface console and you log into them in a very similar sort of way. The FileMaker Cloud user interface is much more modern, almost to what I would refer to as an Apple standard in terms of the web interface and its styling. Very professional. Now if we just set that aside and we look at what they both offer, we can see that we have the dashboard here which gives us useful information. In fact I think to some degree much more useful information than what we see with FileMaker Server. We also have the databases. This is the databases that are currently running. We also uh, have the clients that are currently connected which is pretty much standard. The backup screen here is a little bit different on FileMaker Server. It's called Schedules. Here we don't really have a schedules uh, option, we just have backups which run every 20 minutes. Now of course we can preserve certain ones, etc. And we'll cover more of that in another video. And then of course we have the configuration window and the configuration options here are somewhat different as well. And we'll cover this later on in another video. But that being said, you start to see the differences here. Fundamentally, the dashboard, the database, and the backups largely correspond to the equivalent functionality in FileMaker Server. So while it looks different, the net result is that your databases are being hosted in the same manner as what you've seen previously. On FileMaker Server, the configuration is actually broken out amongst several different tabs and there's actually more configuration options because frankly it does more things, right? That being said, FileMaker Cloud was developed and frankly tuned to meet the needs of a vast majority of FileMaker users. And if you want to adjust your subscription, the number of users you have, that kind of thing, then you can adjust that here at the subscription tab. Both FileMaker Server and FileMaker Cloud support all the typical clients that we see. That includes support for Pro, Pro Advanced, 
and of course that's Mac and Windows, FileMaker Go, which is iPhone and iPad, and support of WebDirect. FileMaker Cloud does not support custom web publishing. So if you're building a PHP-based website or an XML website that runs in parallel with your FileMaker database, then FileMaker Cloud is not going to be an option for you. Another area of difference between FileMaker Cloud and the standard FileMaker on-premise server is that the FileMaker server can run and process FileMaker scripts on a hosted custom application on a set schedule. This is called Server Assisted Script Execution or SASE. SASE is available on FileMaker Server, not available on FileMaker Cloud because really there's no scheduling engine within the FileMaker Cloud. There's nowhere in there for you to go in there and set a schedule. However, a feature that we use all the time is perform script on server. And this is an explicit command where we tell the FileMaker client software to have the server run a script for us. It runs much faster, much quicker if we can have the server do it for us. That technology is called Perform Script on Server, or PSOS, and that is fully supported both on FileMaker Cloud and FileMaker Server. Now keep in mind, on FileMaker Cloud, the number of PSOS sessions that can run at one time is limited to 25. Now when you install and set up a FileMaker Server, the default number that that standard server will run at one time is also 25. And most people never ever have a problem with that. However, on FileMaker Server, if you need to change that number and have it be able to run more of those, that is a setting that can be changed. On FileMaker Cloud, it's set at 25, which for most people won't be an issue. What about server-side plugins? Well, with FileMaker Server, you can install Mac or Windows based plugins on the FileMaker server and it can take advantage of those. FileMaker Cloud also supports plugins, however they have to be recompiled and set up for the Linux operating system. Which means that if you have a plugin manufacturer that you really like, like 360 Works or Productive Computing, etc., you're going to need to check with those folks to make sure that they have versions of their plugin that are compatible with FileMaker Cloud. If you have an ODBC data source that's set up on your FileMaker server where you connect through ESS to Oracle, Microsoft SQL, or MySQL, then that technology is supported within FileMaker Cloud. In fact, the ODBC and JDBC drivers are already installed. What you have to do is configure the DSN on the FileMaker Cloud to connect to that data source. What about security? Well, this is an interesting area and an interesting difference between FileMaker Cloud and regular FileMaker Server. And that is, FileMaker Server, or our on-premise server, allows us to run FileMaker without security on it. So, for example, we have videos that discuss encryption at rest or file-based encryption. And FileMaker Server can leverage files that either have the ear encryption enabled or disabled. So FileMaker Server can go either way. FileMaker Cloud requires that custom apps that are uploaded to it have ear encryption turned on. Now luckily, FileMaker Cloud will turn that encryption on for us at the time we upload the file and we have to specify a key for that file. Or you can set this up with FileMaker Pro Advanced. The other big security area is encryption over the wire or SSL encryption. Once again, FileMaker Server, that's an option. So you can run encryption over the wire from your FileMaker server or you could have that disabled so the data is transmitting back and forth from the server to the client unencrypted. However, when using FileMaker Cloud, SSL encryption across the wire is a requirement. So when you set up your FileMaker Cloud server, you're going to receive a 90-day free SSL certificate that works great for three months. During that 90-day window, you're going to be encouraged to renew that certificate to keep it up to date and live on your FileMaker Cloud server. So in short, FileMaker Cloud requires all the security protocols to be enabled. There's no option to run things unsecure. As a side note, you can roll your own SSL certificate if you want to go through the process of generating the certificate request, etc. So that is an option for the deep technical people if they want to go down that road. This does add a little bit of cost in terms of paying for the annual SSL certificate. 
but SSL certificates are becoming a modern day requirement in the era where hackers are actively trying to get into your data. So it's not a bad thing. So regarding backups on your FileMaker server, backups on the FileMaker cloud effectively run every 20 minutes. You cannot schedule them at specific times. They just run every 20 minutes. Now you can tell the FileMaker cloud server to preserve certain copies or if you need to you can restore a data set from a backup. So that's all doable. But there's a handful of gotchas with this technology and it's a little bit different but at the end of the day both FileMaker cloud and FileMaker server offer complete backups that protect you in the event that you need to roll back to an older version of your custom application. We have another video where we talk about backups in detail. And one of the final points I want to make about FileMaker Cloud is that when you set up FileMaker Cloud, you're not going to have remote access to the operating system's interface. So for example, when you set up a Mac server or a Windows server in your office, you can actually log on to that machine and control the operating system. Or if you actually set up your own Amazon server and you install FileMaker Server on it, you can log on to the Windows environment and see that. Well, FileMaker Cloud abstracts that level of complexity from the equation. There is no login to the Linux interface to see the Linux machine. The only interfaces that you have are the FileMaker Cloud administrative console or the actual Amazon AWS console which allows you to spin up and spin down entire servers. But there's nowhere to log in to actually see the Linux interface. It doesn't exist. So it's completely abstracted from you. Which so far in our testing has been a great thing because it greatly simplifies the process of setting up the server, of administering the server. Just across the board it makes things much more pleasant. So that covers kind of a walking checklist of the differences between FileMaker Cloud and FileMaker Server, the regular on-premise server. So in another video, we're going to actually talk about the decision making that goes into deciding which server is best for you. Now, as we start to shoot that video, we're going to see that probably 80% of users can use FileMaker Server or FileMaker Cloud, either one. They have a choice. But it's good to go through the decision making tree to make sure that FileMaker Cloud is right for you. So we'll cover that in another video.